My name is Sarah. For those of you who are new here, welcome and click the red subscribe button to join the family if you want to see pretty cool videos every single week. Today I'm showing you five really simple science experiments that you can do at home when you're bored. They're super quick and easy to do and rather affordable as well. These are some fun ideas that I found on Pinterest. So we're going to do some pin experimenting. If I could wink, I would wink there. I can't, I don't think. If you like Pinterest, give this video a thumbs up and if you don't, I will know you are lying. Now, without further ado, let's get to it! The first really cool science experiment I'm going to show you is a rain cloud in a jar. So take a clear glass or plastic container that's fairly large, large enough so that you have a few inches at the bottom for raindrops to fall down. And I just filled this with room temperature water. You want to leave an inch or maybe more at the top so you have space to put your shaving cream later. But first, you can prepare the different colors of rain by getting little tiny containers and putting a tiny bit of water in each and then go ahead and take food coloring or soap colorant if you have that and put a few drops in each container and then just mix it up a little. Now comes the shaving cream of course. It's super affordable and there is a lot in this. I actually did paper marbling with this sometime last year so that's why it has Jurassic Park on it but anyway you're just going to squeeze out some shaving cream and make it look as cloud like as possible. And then take one or two colors at a time and you're going to pour that on top of the rain cloud and watch it drip through. The goal is to try and get it to drip through the shaving cream and not spread out and sneak in through the sides of the glass. I think mine did that a little bit and that's why the water got so colorful so quickly. But you can see that it did work for some of the drips that I put in and you can see them slowly coming out and spreading their colors all throughout the water. It is so beautiful and it looks really, really magical. I tried it a couple more times. Here's my second attempt. I think that it looks a lot like ice cream at this point with colorful syrup. And my third attempt, which is pretty similar to the others, but I wanted to get a close-up of these dramatic bursts that just pop through the surface of the cloud and are really, really crazy. I definitely could sit and do this for quite a while if I had a day where I didn't have to do anything. It's a lot of fun to watch. The second experiment is my personal twist on the Skittles rainbow experiment where you put Skittles all around a plate. I actually did it in my painting with Skittles video a while back. I'll link that below for you. But anyway, I wanted to do kind of like a waterfall with the Skittles instead. So I propped up a pie pan and then I dampened a napkin. You want a white one so you can see the color bleed through. And then I just draped that down kind of like a slanted waterfall here and then I put the Skittles and rested them on top. If you slant your container too much, they're just gonna fall straight down, and mine had a little trouble staying up, but because my container has ridges, that helped it. But you could also try and put maybe a popsicle stick across or a long dowel and like tape it into place and then like have them rest on top of that, if that makes sense. But anyway, after you get the candy lined up like this, I didn't have room for green, by the way, but it's still gonna look cool. You can go ahead and just pour water slowly on top of the candy so it dissolves the color and makes it blend and drain down. It's going to drip kind of like my Sharpie watercolor art. That was really cool. So I'll link that below as well. I swear I don't mean to do all this self-promotion, but for those of you who are new here, I don't feel like you know what I'm talking about. So I just want you guys to be in the so craftastic loop. 
And this was my first and only time attempting this, so I decided to flip the candies over, and that way more of the pigment from the candy shell would be able to drain down, but then afterwards I realized that if I just got a dropper, then I could get the water distributed evenly over the entire candy without making them fall down. That's kind of what I was worried about. So I find that the dropper actually worked a lot better than just pouring straight from the measuring cup. This is a lot of fun to do, and you can actually use this as artwork after it dries. You might want to try experimenting and seeing if certain types of paper will work so you don't have a napkin hanging on your wall, but either way, the effect it produces is really cool. This is more of a slow process than the rainbow plate experiment. It's just going to bleed into the napkin and then slowly drip down and spread out over time. The third experiment is another one that's pretty artsy, but this time you're going to use paint instead of candy. I got a box lid, a piece of paper, some extra strong magnets, acrylic paint, and some metal pieces that are going to be easily attracted to a magnet. The first thing I did was just squeeze out a little paint. You don't need a ton for this and you can definitely put more in if you run out. Then taking a pair of tweezers so I don't get my fingers all dirty, I just dipped the first metal piece, which is a thumbtack, into the paint and I put it on top of the paper. Now you want to move kind of quickly because the paint will start to get tacky and dry after maybe 30 seconds or a minute, so just keep that in mind but put the magnet underneath and the metal piece will move all around the paper and paint it's like a ghost painting I soon found out that this magnet was probably not going to be strong enough so I pulled out my super strong magnets they're just from Michaels but after I got that magnet stuck on then I just experimented with all the different pieces that I had to get different thicknesses of lines and I used different colors of paint of course nails and screws are the most fun because you can get them to stand up on one end and spin around like this I think that covers the most area and is the most fun to watch as well When you're finished, go ahead and let it dry. I think this would be cool to attach to the front of a notebook or put in the plastic slot of a binder so you can write your subject on it. You can even, of course, hang it on your wall or on the fridge if you like it enough. And even if you don't want to display it, it was still a lot of fun to do. Number four is something that you may be familiar with from school because I know I did this in one of my science classes. It is oobleck. For this, I'm using cornstarch, a measuring cup, and water. That is all you need unless you want to add color and glitter, then of course food coloring and glitter. I measured one cup of cornstarch and half a cup of water and I'm just putting soap color into my water because I wanted it to be a turquoisey color and I didn't have this color in my food coloring. And then I sprinkled in a ton of fine glitter and mixed it all around. By the way, I wasn't trying to hide the fact that I was super messy with the cornstarch earlier and I am super messy with it again. I should have gotten a spoon or something, but it's easy to clean up. So anyway, I poured that into the container, of course, and then I slowly mixed in the water and stirred it together. It gets a little bit tricky to stir together because the more pressure you apply, the more solid it wants to become. So you have to kind of find the trick to get the powder mixed in and get it all combined together. And I realized that it wasn't bright enough for my liking, so I added more food coloring and swirled it in. Now let's see it in action. When you punch it and apply a lot of force, it acts as a solid. But when you are slow and just kind of let your fingers sink in, it acts like quicksand and it's like a liquid. The same thing when you pick it up and you squeeze it in your hand, it feels kind of solid or dough-like. And then the minute you let go and stop applying pressure, it oozes all out through your fingertips and it looks like slime. This stuff is very trippy and a lot of fun. Super easy and cheap to make, so if you have a rainy day at home, this is a great idea. P.S. If you have not yet joined the SoCraftastic family, please click the red subscribe button. We would love to have you.
The final project is one that I personally had never seen up until about a week or two ago. You can use popsicle sticks of any kind, of course colorful ones will make it more fun. I'm using the thicker kind. And what I'm going to do is first just take one and lay it diagonally like this. You want to follow exactly what I'm doing on screen and then you're going to place one on top and put that crisscrossing so it looks like an X. The third stick you're going to put underneath the very first stick that you laid down and that will be the yellow in my case. Stick number four I'm going to place underneath the other side of stick number one and then you're going to put it over stick number three. So this red violet stick is going on top of the red stick and you want it to be parallel to the second stick which is the orange stick in my case. If any of my words confuse you just stop listening to me and watch the screen instead. You might have to tweak it a bit and move the angles around for stick number five to fit in correctly because you can see I didn't have a lot of leftover space on the orange one but I moved it a little bit and then I put the fifth stick underneath and on top of the fourth like so. And you want it to be parallel to the third stick which is the red one. And again I'm moving things around here so I have enough space to put the blue one which is stick number six. And you're just going to keep crisscrossing like so. Put the next stick underneath the previous set and on top. So you're just kind of weaving it. I think this is called the Cobra Weave. And basically you're just storing energy in all these sticks. I believe it's potential energy that is building up in all the sticks that you have at the beginning. So keeping that in mind, you have to hold down the sticks that you're putting in place and make sure that they don't fall out or anything or else they will all just go toppling everywhere. Keep repeating this again, put one part of the stick underneath and then on top of the other and weave it. Once you've done enough, I think I did 20, I really didn't count, but you're going to just hold down the end and let it go and watch them fly. This experiment takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it is really easy to do. I tried this a few times and got a couple different angles for you. It is a very, very quick reaction. It's like a split second that these things pop and fly all over. So I slowed this footage down so much for you guys so you could kind of see what was happening. That's all. Let me know in the comment section below which experiment from this video was your favorite and what other Pinterest experiments you want me to try in the future. this video if you did give it a big thumbs up to let me know and also leave me some more video suggestions in the comment section below maybe more Pinterest tests or projects that you want me to try or just any other type of DIY or product review I want to know what you guys want to see if you have not yet seen my what I got for Christmas video and or my 1000 degree glowing knife experiment video which is awesome you should check those out I will link them in the description box below for your viewing pleasure and also check out my vlog channel live love Sarah Lynn to see what goes on behind the scenes in my life like day-to-day -day stuff if you're interested, you know, that is also linked down below. Along with my social media pages because I like to chat with you guys on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Crafty Amino. So if you guys have any of those accounts, feel free to add me and say hi. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and that I'll see you back here next Friday when I come back with a new video. Bye! Well, my hair was just doing a weird thing. There's a window right there and it's snowing. This is literally how I film for you guys. But Leo? Meow? Meow? I speak cat. I was sitting on my ankle bone and it hurts. Massage! Massage!